thanks all for joining. Um, just a quick run through of the agenda before I go into official welcome. Um, it, it's it's probably not going to pan out as uh, like any other um, uh, annual parish meeting before. Um, I'm very much going to focus on the future and our great community groups and um, and leave enough time for open forum at the end. Um, that's how it's going to run. We're going to have um, we we do have to go through the uh, minutes from 2019. And uh, those will be signed off. And then I've got a brief report on um, what we've achieved so far and what the future holds. Um, Parish Pump, which is uh, 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 very dear to everyone's heart. And then we've got Social Committee, Gardening Club. Um, we're going to hear from local business, which is uh, Upper Cup Gardening Services. And, um, and then we'll go into open forum. Lucy, you've just sent me a message saying waiting for host. I was just checking my internet wasn't playing up, but it wasn't, so it's fine. Are we all good? We're all good. Okay, brilliant. Right, I'm diving in. Um, so first of all, welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, I know it's uh, in very strange circumstances. These would normally be held at the Village Hall and there'd be refreshments and food, um, which would certainly get me there. Um, but uh, Times don't allow that at the moment. So we're on Zoom and we're recording and we're going to go uh, and, and put this on the website for, for more people to uh, digest the content. But thanks for um, thanks for attending today. Um, I am going to try and um, rattle through relatively quickly um, and I'll leave, uh, leave uh, time at the end for, for questions, which are, which are all important. First of all, before I jump in, um, some special thanks. Um, and this isn't an, an exhaustive list. I just wanted to mention uh, uh, the sterling work that John Bennett, uh, my predecessor as chair, did for the, uh, the council, his diligence and hard work, um, and um, wish him all the best um, for, for the future, and uh, just wanted to get his name up there in lights, which was uh, duly deserved. And uh, it goes without saying, really, thanks to uh, my fellow councillors. I, I only joined um, near the tail end of last year. Um, and um, I have to thank everyone for, for the support um, that I've had, um, especially as um, chairman. Um, and uh, it really is quite a tight knit team. Um, and I do felt I do feel that we are um, we are supporting each other in the best ways possible. So thanks. Thanks to everyone. Um, I do have to uh, I, I do feel I have to thank our, our two um, clerks who we've had in over the pre previous 12 months. So first of all, Peter. Mm -hmm who came in to, um, you know, drastically modernise the council and its approach, its documentation. Um, and uh, after uh, Peter left, we've been seeking a, a new clerk for some time. And uh, very recently, Bruce Poole has joined us as a locum, um, extremely experienced and uh, very, very um, insightful conversations that I've had with him um, on our transformation into the future. So special thanks to both Peter and Bruce. I did want to say on behalf of the whole community, a very special thank you for Simon, um, uh, specifically for, keep, for keeping us going in lockdown with the Friday takeaway. And I think it has to be said, and, and, and it, will never, it will never be exhausted saying this, a huge thank you from everyone that that touched. Um, I know that uh, for me personally, a Friday evenings, looking forward to going down and picking up um, our takeaways, um, taking as long as possible in the queue so you could talk to everyone. Uh, sometimes, uh, so, yeah, sometimes there for quite a considerable amount of time. And um, it really did bring the village together in a very tough time. So I think on, on behalf of uh, the council and, and indeed, I, I would hope the whole village, a, a huge thank you to Simon for, okay. for doing that. Oh, I'm in a, hi, I'm in a Zoom meeting at the moment. I'll just mute David. Um, and uh, and finally, I wanted a big shout out for Stu, um, who, as you know, is uh, is stepping down from Parish Pump after nearly forty years. Um, and I can't thank Stu enough for for um, how much he has helped and his insight and his guidance in in uh, in making a making it a smooth transition to the future of the parish pump and indeed uh, uh, also thanking him for his huge commitment over the years, which has again uh, made a massive difference to the community. So thanks to Stu. Okay, now relatively stale part of the meeting, but 
we have to do this and uh, and and we'll get uh, we'll, we'll get a signed copy of the minutes from 2019 we didn't hold one in 2020 due to covid restrictions so here are the minutes i know they've been socialized quite a bit before they've been on the website for a while um but we'll just briefly go through and make sure that we were happy to have these signed off um so i'm not going to read this verbatim um but just to uh, to paraphrase um, uh, we, we started off with uh, Karen Wood giving a presentation on scams, very prevalent now, um, especially in, uh, in lockdown. There's been um, a series of um, nationwide scams that have hit people in lockdown, um, especially around uh, vaccination and paying for it. So this, is, this was at the time, um, as it is now, very, very pertinent. Um, after Karen's presentation, um uh we uh i wasn't there but the uh the the assembly uh signed off the uh, minutes from 2018 the that was followed by a chairman's report um talking about the 20 mile an hour speed limit and the planters um now you have to you have to put, take your mind back to the the road before the 20 mile an hour uh, speed limit and the chicane through the planters it was a, a, a very different street now i'm not saying that that it's fixed everything um, but certainly when you look back at um, old parish council minutes, um, you can see that the, the road issue was a, a lot, lot worse before this. Um, White Hart was doing well at this time, it's mentioned. Um, also, again, extra thanks to Stu Redway for Parish Pump. Um, and social committee is here mentioned organising different events of the year. So I'll continue down and then there were questions at the end. Um, talking about uh, PTH's round um, as chairman over the years in difficult times um, and talking about databases, a database held by the parish council um, in order to publicise monthly meetings. This one's really um, quite interesting for me because even now um, it is a struggle for the parish council to publicise and socialise information. There are lots of different outlets. We've, we've got the website, we've got Facebook, we've got WhatsApp. Um, email. Um, we've got the notice board. There isn't one perfect solution and I think this is a very very pertinent point that was raised back then and, and we do need to actually come up with a, a, a more fleshed out plan as to how we communicate with, with parishioners. It's still it's still not perfect um, even you know two years on. Is everyone um, with that summary is everyone here present satisfied that that um, summarizes the meeting as it was? Yep. Great. Brilliant. I'm going to sign that off. Um, okay. So my 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 report is not going to labour too much on the past twelve months, and for many many reasons, um, it's been unprecedented. Uh, living through lockdowns through the pandemic, which is. Uh, touched all of us in, in very different ways. Um, we've lost the White Heart. We've had uh, resignations from the council. We lost Peter, our council clerk, and obviously the bad news that uh, the, uh, Stu was working on his final edition. Now, for all of us, we'll have different items to add to this list to summarise the previous 12 months. Um, and I'm not the sort of person that wants to dwell on that. I want to look at the future and Lucy's going to kill me for using that photo but it makes a very valid point for me the future is about um, passion and energy and bringing about change um, Lucy and I joined the parish council uh, at the tail end of uh, last year and it's fair to say that the energy that we brought to the wisdom that was already in place has been a winning combination. Um, it really does feel like we are a close team and our skills are, um, uh, are being used effectively in different areas. Um, and I think that the picture <laughs> that Lucy will kill me for using really does summarize um, how it feels to be part of the parish council, engaging with people, yes, having fun, but in an official capacity. Um, and, and there's that vibrancy that, that you can feel within the council 
um, which is which is really infectious. Uh, and again, I thank all all the councillors for making that happen because it's been wonderful to watch. We have a new website. Our old one um, died. Um, it wasn't it wasn't fit for its new purpose. We have a new website, which I'll go into later, which has been a huge piece of work. Um, the parish pump um, will continue to be produced. It will live on, and I've got news about that later. The gardening group are doing a fantastic job rejuvenating the village green and the planters. That work is ongoing. Social committee this week released uh, news about planned events that we can look forward to in the future. The village fate is in planning, which is again extremely exciting. Um, there's a there's a lot of momentum building behind the crusade to save the the pub. Um, the village has gone through that before, but it still has a passion. It has that passion there, and and everyone's uniting behind it, which is fantastic to see. And all the while, we're building close ties between community groups, which at times may have seemed quite uh, disparate. But um, I, I do see the role of the, the, the parish council as, as tying those community groups together. Everyone's talking. Um, we're discussing about great things that we can do for the community, which is really, really positive. And um, again, another shout out to Lucy um, with, her, with her expertise, bringing a focus on well-being um, to the community and to the parish council, thinking about what we can do, not just for physical health, but for mental health within the community, um, which is, I think, a, a fantastic new dimension to add to, to what we want, want to achieve in the future. Um, so I am, I am very positive and I'm very passionate about what we can do. Um, one of the things I'm really passionate about was bringing a, 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 an up-to-date and um, multifaceted website to the community. Um, we need to figure out the best way to include everyone. Um, the website won't be for everyone. That's fine. This is just one, um, one weapon in our arsenal um, for getting in touch and spreading the word. And also for accessibility. There are going to be people in our community that can't attend village hall meetings. So being able to watch it with closed caption or um, listen to it on YouTube, for example, um, and transcriptions being made available, all these things we have to think about, even down to um, even down to the text that's used on the website to enable text readers uh, for those uh, who, who are visually impaired. Um, uh, all, this, all of these considerations have, have gone into the building of the website. Um, the parish council section in there is now separate to parish pump online. They're two separate entities. The structure's there so that parish pump online can grow and grow and support its hard copy uh, sister publication. And the parish council documentation and, and details are on there as well, the way they should be. And uh, I just checked today, we've, we've had over a thousand page visit, visits in April, which is uh, quite astounding, up from 700 last month. So that's building and building, which means more people are going. I think we've touched on oh, just over 100 individual uh, households um, so far within the parish, which is great, but, it's, it, but we still need to grow that. The 35 unique pages of information. Um, which have been compiled over the last uh, two to three months, which I would urge everyone to go and have a look. It's not going to be for everyone, but you might find something in there that you really uh, relate to, um, especially our online community groups, such as uh, social committee and, and, and gardening group. We're using social media to get the, move, uh, the message across. We've just uh, set up a YouTube account where all of our meetings and uh, relevant footage will be available. Again, very accessible, um, uh, especially those with, for those with disabilities. Um, and we continue to support local businesses and groups. The website isn't just for the parish council. The parish council is funding it. Um, I'm maintaining it free of charge, um, and anyone can have uh, community pages or information on that website and use it as if you had your own uh, website hosting. It's there for the community to use. You just need to reach out. Um, and finally, I am slowly and steadily uh, scanning in every single parish pump that's ever been issued. Um, I have them all next to me in a box. I'm currently halfway through the 1990s. I will get through all of them eventually, but I keep stopping to read them. Um, and, I, and they will all be available online for everyone um, forevermore. Um, and I do, I do suggest that you, you take a dive into that and, and really of the 80s and 90s. 
Um, so all of that's all of that's coming. I've got some pictures here that show you the various different aspects of the website. We've got events on here that anyone in the in the community can use. Um, the parish pump uh, archive is there. Um, we've got photo albums, for example. We've got history sections. You name it, it's on there. Um, but that will just continue to grow. So I'm going to dive into parish pump. I've got two slides specifically on parish pump. Um, there was obviously uh, a great deal of sadness around the news that the parish pump would would see its last edition this year. Um, to which the, uh, the the reaction was to, to to focus on that and make sure that it wasn't going to disappear. So I've jumped in um, and very quickly learnt the ropes of desktop publishing um, and uh, have started to plan for the tail end of the year, continuing with four editions per year. Um, it will be in hard copy to every household. Um, and, and indeed, there'll be some left to go out in, uh, and we'll distribute them around um, uh, local businesses. Um, it will work alongside Parish Pump Online. So if you go on the website, I've, I've mentioned those 35 pages, they will continue to grow with articles and we will take the best articles from there and put them into the publication. But they're also within the hard copy, there will be unique uh, content that will not be seen anywhere else. Um, they'll, work, they'll work in tandem. Um, we will not only look forward to the future in the parish pump, but we'll also look to the past and a reg there'll be a regular spot for archives from the parish pump um, to ground us in, in, in our past as well as look forward to the future. There is no additional budget required. It's all happening and coming in with the, with the, uh, with the same budget as before, um, but we do need volunteers. We need volunteers to make this work. Um, and I'm happy to announce that we already have a growing list of people that are involved in the new publication. Uh, Stu will remain as honorary editor. Um, I'll keep the amount of work he has to do to the absolute minimum, apart from saying yes, go to print or no, don't. I think that's probably enough for Stu and that's that's perfectly fine. Um, the names listed there have very, very kindly uh, volunteered to, to help with content. And, and that list can absolutely grow and, and needs to grow to keep to keep Parish Pump uh, vibrant. But it's it's a start, and um, and I do feel that that, that list is going to grow quite steadily. So that's my Parish Pump update. I'm now going to hand over to Social Committee. Uh, is that yourself, Simon? It certainly is. Yeah, I think um, Becky's going to give me a hand as well. Brilliant. Yeah, of course. Okay, where are we going to start? We had a meeting, didn't we, last week, Simon? We did, yeah. We've come up with um, sort of three events for this year, haven't we? Um, we're going to do a, a village barbecue, um, a Christmas event, and help out with the um, village fete. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for the barbecue, um, which is going to be in September, September 11th. We're going to have a dog show as well to make it quite fun. So a lot of people in the village have dogs. And it'll be silly classes like the waggiest tail and um, agility, best behaved, worst behaved. But just to bring all the villagers together, everyone, because it's fun and also the kids can join in if they've got animals, you know, dogs they want to bring in, which is lovely. And also there'll be a huge barbecue, which Simon's going to take the reins on, I think, and get all the meat cooking. So it'll be great fun. Looking forward to that. Yeah, it'd be very, very similar to the um, sort of barbecue that we did in the pub two years ago. So hopefully try and get 150 plus people along, which would be good. So, yeah, yeah of course, brilliant. Fate, which I know you're organising, aren't you? A big section, Simon. Yes, so, we're going again, to... Um, food and booze, important things. <laughs> Yeah, so the social committee are going to run the barbecue, so same as last time, and we're going to run the bar as well. So uh, lots of drinks and lots of food, which is always good. Yeah, and that'll be <laughs> painting held by the um, the parishioners are going to hold that for the kids and stuff like that. Have little like, other fun stands for everybody else. So count, you know, it's for all ages, all age groups. Have fun, and of course the Christmas events we always like to do as well. Yeah, so we've got the um, the village hall booked for the 18th of December for our annual meet and greet, which should be good. Um, 
so yeah, it should be really good. Um, I've noticed uh, Bex and Ev have got a hand up. Is that a question for Simon and uh, Bex? No, I just wanted to add, um, I have been landed with the overall responsibility for um, organising the Village Fate this time, so I'm very happy that um, Simon has offered from the Social Committee to do that piece. But I just wanted to say, if anyone has any ideas of things they'd like us to do, or things we could do differently, please do let me know, because any input gratefully received. Cool. Thank you. Um, on that note, oh, Simon, is there anything we can do to help the uh, Social Committee? What do you need? Um, one thing that springs up is um, putting Christmas lights up over Christmas. Um, sort of, we generally do it the last weekend of November. Okay. Um, we could do it with a few more volunteers. Um, we're going to put a few more lights up this year than last year, try and get a few up down Meadow Drive and various okay. other places. Um, so that's one big thing. Okay. Um, and obviously everyone's be nice if lots of people turned out to all the events really trying to really support them support the uh, village now we haven't got a pub at the moment mm. okay, I um, think we need but yeah definitely this is the social part of the village now <laughs> yeah Sorry. and any help that, that you need publicizing that we can we can leverage the, the number of visits we've got on the website we can use social media at the same time in the printed parish pump we can uh, you're going to have a section in there um that you can use to to Brilliant. explain about everything that's going on and indeed report on what happened and success of events that'd be good to see in there as well perfect what's the best way to contact um social committee and bex um bex hall for the village uh for the church fate mm. church church village fate whatever it's called um what's the best way to contact and, and and give us your your opinions bex i mean obviously i've got your personal mobile but not everyone will so what's what's the best way that's a very good question um it's i was thinking i might actually take up dav's offer and just put a little thing on the website with an email address that people can contact me on yeah cool we can yep. set up a new for that, perhaps. Just keep it up. Which, whichever, we'll work something we'll out. We'll work something out. Yep. But, but, Dav, if I can let you know later, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'll reiterate that. Any any group, any any help needed from a website point of view, um, we'll get something on there. We'll set up a page. I'll maintain it, um, and, and you guys can have content. Uh, very similar way to the social committee have done. Um, we've got uh, information about who to contact, what they do, and, and we're starting to grow a list of events on there, so we can do the same thing. Not a problem. Just, well, just one question on that one, Dev. What's the when's the next issue for the parish pump or the last issue as it currently stands? Yes, yeah, so I believe Stu is aiming to get his last issue out in June. Yeah. Um, prior to that, the new team um, will start to get together to plan the first new edition um in in my head uh, uh we might need to slightly change the dates which were which we want to pub, pub, uh, publish on purely because if we want to support say social committee then it would be good to have one that comes out just before christmas rather than january because then we can publicize the christmas christmas events likewise in the summer we might want to time it so it's before the fate and before any other activity so that we can gather support. Um, so so it's definitely going to be four times, but after Stu does his on in, in June, I think it might slightly skew um, to support events and, and uh, the calendar um, within the village. But uh, Stu's last one, I believe, his deadline for getting anything in is May, which would suggest it's coming out uh, start of June. And that will be the second, uh, the second cadence for the year, yeah, the June. Yeah, it will absolutely, yeah, yeah. Cool. Happy to move on, Simon. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Um, why is that stopped responding? Okay. There's me okay. on the bike. <laughs> there is you on the bike, exactly. Um. <laughs> I'm going to hand over to uh, for for the uh, gardening group report now. Hi, so it's Penny on Ian on Ian's laptop. Mine went on strike, basically. Hi there. 
Hi there. I was just going to sort of start off by just saying a little bit about what the origins of the group were. And, you know, people have been talking about sort of social networking and stuff. Mm. Um, I mean, part of the reason for setting up the group was to have a, a sort of social way that people who were interested in gardening, you know, experts and beginners alike could actually sort of get together and, and share skills. I mean, gardens and gardening have always been an incredibly important thing in the village. Um, historically, open gardens, the hidden gardens of Western Ingordana was a, a really exciting thing. The, I think the last one happened shortly after we moved here and it was, a, it was a wonderful chance to actually go around the village and find all these wonderful gardens that were hidden away and raise masses of money um, latterly for the village hall. Mm -hmm. So there was that sort of feeling that actually having a, a group of people who were sort of that was that was the link was was part of the catalyst um and of course the other thing that everybody always looks forward to every year is the is the plant sale and plant sale doesn't happen all by itself and uh, the number of people involved in in running it we really needed a sort of a stronger base so that was another reason for thinking well if we had a gardening group perhaps you know perhaps that would help and and you know and that does seem to be working as well so the gardening group is is really a combination of people who like to talk about plants like to talk about gardens some people who've got quite a lot of expertise some have got lots of expertise um, and others are, are sort of fairly beginning you know fairly beginner-ish one or two beginner-ish people um, and we would really, really like to welcome others who would wish to join us. At the moment, there's pro we're probably about, we have a mailing list of probably about 17 or 18 people, something like that. Um, in the olden days, when we could actually meet in a place, we used to meet in the village hall. Um, then last year, last summer, um, when we could start meeting again, we had a really nice summer of meeting in people's gardens. Um, plants, tea and cake and talk was a really nice nice combination and we hope that we'll get back to that soon um, so we'd have you know a combination of practical activities and so on um, we were invited by the parish council quite a while ago now to have a look at what we could actually do about sort of tidying up the, the village green. I mean, maintaining the, the grass and trying to make it look nice was actually always a rather challenging job. Um, and so the sort of designing process and thinking about what the issues are have been sort of useful sort of vehicles for discussion really. And that's carried on um, online while we've not been able to meet. Um, so, you know, as you will have seen, work has actually begun. We're, we, we're, um, we've got some very kind sort of voluntary offers of help with um, working on the stonework and the gravel um, and that will, you know, be forthcoming as soon as it can be. Um, but we really wanted to capitalise on the summer and actually get on with the planting. So hopefully you will start seeing stuff actually beginning to grow. We're watering like mad to try and get it going now. Um, and watering is actually one of the things that is, is a thing. And we were, um, we're hoping that um, diff people in different parts of the village will help with watering the containers, because obviously we're looking after the containers as well. Um, and some of you may have seen that um, Chris Lewis has managed to persuade North Somerset Council to actually give us a, a Pantechnican load of annuals that will be arriving next month to brighten up the village. And these have been offered to anyone who has a, a piece of garden that is sort of public. So if, if people have somewhere where they can put a container where, you know, the well other people will see, we won't be rivaling Portishead in bloom quite, but we'd like to have a, a jolly good shot. But obviously keeping those watered is quite a challenge. Um, so, you know, our request to anyone is if you if you have a container near you, please run out with a, you know, a watering can or an empty milk bottle thing full of water or something every so often and, and keep them going. Um, so our thanks to the um, parish council for funding um, the plants and, and the work 
on the village green um that money you know we're gradually gradually spending it and hopefully um hopefully a bit later on in the summer it, it will look like a sort of finished piece of work and there will be a bench coming um hopefully that will be a place that people will sort of pause and talk and look at the bees and you know enjoy basically um so what else was i just going to say so the village green um so helping, helping with sort of jobs of sort of clearing stuff and things like that. So if there are ever offers of assistance, um, I mean, it might be that we put a little sort of slot on the, on the website saying, you know, this month we could really do with help with such and such, you know, that might be something that we could do. So we, so we want people to come forward and, and offer to house some of the annuals and enjoy them when they come next month. The other idea that we've had, one or two people are sort of saying, mm, I mean, we know the pub is looking a bit pat tatty and one of our volunteers has been working hard. He's busy renovating the containers that are in front of the pub at the moment. No, hopefully we can get those planted up so that will, you know, brighten things up a lot. But quite a lot of the verges are looking a bit sort of a um, bit manky, basically. Um, we are not um, lots and lots of young people who are going to sort of do all the clearing ourselves, but we'd quite like to be, um, some of us would like to be catalysts for sort of having an effort to perhaps spruce up the village a little bit and wondered whether that might be of interest. Um, we will, I was, I know an, an, another village nearby last weekend, they, they did what they called a village hoedown, which was a sort of a collective get together, not necessarily with your hoe, but if you have a hoe, that would be great. Um, we were wondering whether that might be something that we could get lots of people to join in, in possibly perhaps as jointly, jointly with the social committee so that we could perhaps get together for a barbecue afterwards or something like that. Um, you know, so that we can all sort of take a pride and say, yeah, village looks really smart now. Yeah, I like that a lot. Looking I think that's that's really enthusiasm. Yeah. Okay. Right, so that's, that's us really. So very, very happy to have new members. I, I think the other, oh, the other thing for new members is if there was any, if there is anyone who's not a very sort of skilled gardener and who would like advice, one of the things that we did last summer, which was very successful, um, there was um, one person who invited us to her, a member of the group, who invited us to go to her garden on a sort of advisory visit. And that was really fun because we did a sort of question and answer session and everybody likes to sort of chip in their two pennyworth. Um, and we came up with lots of ideas and that was actually a really enjoyable thing. And, and she's gone away with a sort of list of ideas and little pro and projects and offers of support if more support is needed. Um, so that would be something else that, you know, we would be prepared to sort of offer, you know, it would be a nice thing to fit into the year. So thank you. That sounds fabulous. Thank you so much for for that uh, overview. And I just again on on behalf of uh, the the parish council and and, and the village, the, the work that that you're doing um, on on the green and and with the planters and you know, continued efforts to make the village look nice are very very much appreciated. So thank you for that. And and again, like I said, with Simon, anything that we can do, I know we've got your page on the website now. Um, anything we can do to promote that and, uh, and get more support will. Do. So I, just, I was just thinking. I was just thinking if uh, if there was a party that wanted to get together to sort of, as you say, clear up all the weeds off the curbs, pavements, etc. I've got various trimmers, blowers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, we could use mm. um, safe brushing everything, which is a lot quicker. So happy to help with that. Um, I'm sure there's a few people that like to get together. Yeah, I mean, I, yes. We just need to work out how, you know, the mechanism for coming up with a date, really, and publicising it, don't yeah. we? And what yeah. we do with all the, the greenery that we it's... collect on the side of the road. Well, we could have a, we could have a, a three-way conversation, couldn't we, and, and, and put some plans in place and flesh that one out. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. There's, a, there's also... There's also the cutting of a bit of grass by the sort of planters as you come into the village on the Port Z side as well, isn't there? I, I've strimmed it once. Yeah. 
Um, but that could be done regularly, can it? That would be brilliant. Yes, absolutely. That it does make With a difference. Key, so. Yeah, great. Definitely. Idea. Good. Well, let's uh, we'll set something up, and we can we can flesh out some plans on that, and then ev everyone and anyone can jump in and help out. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. I think Robert Fowler, uh, Simon. I think Robert Fowler normally goes out there with his topper and tops that grass from the verge out of coming oh, okay. out, out towards the planters on the other side. Yeah, yeah. The bit the bit I did was literally sort of five foot oh, either side of the yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you uh, around the actual planter right that you probably couldn't get in. No, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Good stuff. Cool. Yep. Um Gardening Club, happy for me to move on? Lovely, yes, please. Lovely, brilliant. Um, it's not responding. There we go. So one thing I'm really keen to uh -huh. do, uh, Simon, <laughs> one thing I'm really, really keen I'm to on the do, spotlight. and, and if, if you've been on the website, you'll see that I'm, I'm trying to, I think we should be promoting local businesses. Um, I think we should promote them in the parish pump. I think we should pr promote them online and with word of mouth. Um, and, and I think as part of the community, we need to be aware of, of those local businesses, that they're there. Um, and, and some have been suffering in lockdown. I think it's only the right thing to do to support local businesses as much as we possibly can. And um, with that vein of thought, uh, that train of thought, um, I, I've invited uh, Simon to, to talk about Uppercut Garden Services. Um, and, uh, you know, this isn't exhaustive. Um, I know I'm, I'm slowly building up a list of known businesses within uh, the village that we're going to start to, to promote in this way. Um, but um, the, the floor is yours, Simon, just to talk about what you do. I've, I've, I've been onto your uh, Facebook you. site and got some pictures to entertain us as you tell us what, um, what Uppercut is all about. Oh, thanks very much. Um, yeah, most most of the people on the sort of call tonight, sort of, I've done work for. They know me anyway. Uh, I've done work for them. Basically, we do everything from lawn cutting, trimming, hedging, fencing, general DIY jobs. Um, done a few carpentry projects. Um, obviously, got a chipper so we can take down your hedge and chip it. Do a lot of leaf clear outs. Um, yeah, basically the pictures sort of show quite a few of those are sort of in the village um, jobs I've done. Um, lots of equipment. Um, love working in the village. It's great fun. Um, just working outside is what I enjoy. So those pictures there are um, a natural waterfall, which I built um, during lockdown. Uh, last year in my own garden um, all built from natural stone there's a good five about five six ton of natural stone um, the water's still crystal clear now after running for nearly a year it's all works on a biological system it's all filtered through gravel it's crystal clear um, just like tap water it's been running for the best part of a year and I really enjoy building that brilliant um took me probably i'd like to say probably about seven days uh hardest bit was moving all the stone into the uh my back garden to be honest <laughs> yeah there's a couple of uh, other pictures of sort of leaf clear outs and bushes trimming and lawns and basically do everything outside really many people simon will be wondering about the uh construction that was sat on your driveway for a while which is which is my fault uh, you mentioned the fact that you, you've also you also build bespoke garden furniture um yes we've built some sorry yeah no yeah so so i built um dav and vicky a sort of bespoke uh american themed woodshed uh for their garden um which is 3.8 metres long, wasn't it, Dav? It was. Um, felted roof, all built from timber. Nice, big, chunky 6 by 2 timber. Looks brilliant. I've also built a pair of uh, benches to match. Have you got any pictures of those, Dav? I have. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't put them on. I think so. <laughs> sorry. They're Little on the site. Yeah, yeah you, you can have a look at my you, Facebook page. You know, when it comes to... Um, 
when it comes to that that aspect i really you know i have a invested interest there in that um we had very specific requirements about what we wanted we could never have bought that furniture anywhere um so uh, a big shout out uh, for Simon actually constructing it, designing it, and um, and getting it in situ. So, um, yeah, massive, thank massive thank you for that. Yeah, if anyone wants anything doing, give us a shout. I'm more than happy to pop along, even if it's a small job or a fortnightly lawn cut or, mm. um, yeah, anything really. Brilliant. Thanks, Simon. There we go. No, thanks. Um, and that, that's on the website. You've also got Facebook site. Um, you're a village, um, village owned company. Um, so, uh, you know, if anyone's support looking local that, businesses, exactly, support local businesses, anyone's looking for that, that, you know, help with the garden and all, all bespoke furniture, give, give Simon a call. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that's, that's community groups and, uh, the chairman's report and everything else done. Um, we're 46 minutes in and Zoom's not telling me I have to end, which is great news. Um, this is a completely open forum. Um, any Anything pertinent to parish life or or council or social committee, anything that you've heard, uh, anyone wants to raise anything, this is this is uh, an open forum for, for that kind of discussion. Does anyone have any, any comments on what you've seen or, or anything they want to raise? Okay. I'll take that as a good thing. I'll take that as a well-received message. Well, it, it, nice and silence is approval. So I'll take that as approval. Excellent. Um, well, uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining, everyone that presented. Uh, again, another big thank you to the community groups, everything you're doing for the community. Um, you, you, have, uh, you have parish council support, and hopefully we all support our, each other as we're coming out of lockdown and we can start to enjoy the village uh, as we have done before. But uh, not to labour a point, I, I thank you very much for joining and uh, have a great evening and uh, hopefully meet up very soon face to face. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, all. Thank you all. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.